Okay, are we working? Are we on? I don't know if we're on. Give me a wee minute. I am not set up properly. <laughs> that wasn't stressful at all. Okay, maybe it was just dead stressful. Hold on. I think we're on. I believe we're on. I didn't get a chance to set this up properly. And see when I get panicky, start speaking Dundonian. And nobody knows what's going on. Nobody cares what's happening. Right, let's see if I can sort something here. Oh, 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 oh. I'm the stress, you're stressed. What are you talking about? Right, there we go. Woo, right, got to get this amp off. Ah, what a day, what a day. Right, seeing as the stream is off to such a great start, thank you if you're here. I can see some chat, so thank you so much for coming. Hugely appreciated and for bearing with me for God. I was on nine minutes in. Yeesh, that feels like an eternity. Thank you so much, sorry. Um, yeah, is everything working? Can you hear, can you see, have we got echo, delays, all that kind of jazz. Oh dear. Ah oh dear, ah oh dear, ah oh dear. Right, okay, let's go have a look through the chat, see who was all in. I'll just say hello to everybody because I've probably missed a lot. You've all been having a go at me, probably. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> hello, <laughs> Bumcrack Watchco. Hello, mate. How you doing? That's one of the best usernames. There's so many good ones, but that one cracks me up. Uh, the lamb's in. Hello, lamb. How you doing, mate? It's Leo's fault. Yeah, we're talking about trends today, so hopefully we'll get talking about that. Hello, Rob F. How you doing, mate? Cal being the Rocco Cat. Glenn Bailey, who likes black guitars, is in. Hello, hello. Scott Bogfoot's in. Hello, mate. How you doing? Thanks for coming. Uh, de -de 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 -de. John Channing's in. Evening, mate. How you doing? Anthony Edwardson. Hello, mate. So cool to see you all here. Thank you so much for coming. Ah, Lindsay's in. How you doing, mate? Hi, mate. What are you hammering on about now? Ah, good to see you, mate. Yes, I've got... Uh, we're talking about Trems, aren't we? I hope I've not missed anybody. There's Peter Collins. How you doing, mate? Thanks for coming, buddy. Uh, Ivor, word up. Yow. Uh, word up, mate. Um, Cal B is in. Hello, Cal B. Did I already say hello to you? I can't remember. I'm sorry. That's how good my memory is. Chimp number one's in. Number one chimp in town. Gary Hill, how you doing, mate? Good to see you. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm doubling up people here. The J Caster is in. How you doing, mate? <clears throat> Who have I missed? Rubbish Guitar Bloke's in. How you doing, RGB? Uh, maybe not getting good vibratos. I think Steve's bear has gone the better of him. <laughs> yep. Didn't work out very well there, did it? Right, I've uh, missed anybody here, Glenn. Vincent Brennan's in, hello mate, how you doing? Uh, Mark Green Guitar, hello mate. Uh, please save the day, the missus is watching Emmerdale. <laughs> is that still on? Dear me. Uh, what was that there? When in doubt, restart, yep, that's what we had to do. Oh, I just seen Dingers there. There he is, evening Steve, evening Dingers, how you doing mate? Uh, doodly doodly doodly. Right, Daniel Scott's in, hello mate. You're in from Norwich, thanks for coming mate. Gearview Mirror's in as well. Hello, mate. How you doing? Uh, K. Michael P's in. How you doing, mate? Thanks for coming. Luke Co. Luke K.O. Um, Bumcrack Watch Co's here again. George Channing. Anthony Everson. Start watching with my Jazz Master on my knee. It's a recent fascination, but it's my current favourite guitar and favourite vibrato. That was Anthony Edwardson. And there's the game day in as well. How you doing, mate? Thanks for coming. Uh, Jazz Master. Yeah, I've got Jazz Master gas pretty bad this year. It's got to happen. We'll get there. One day. Right. I'm all out of sorts. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, we're going to talk about Trems. Let's get right in it because I've wasted some a lot, a lot of your time and I'm sorry about that. Uh, okay, so this will take me a wee minute because I had everything set up and now I have to change things a little bit. I'm going to open up some tabs. Uh, bear with me. Thank you for bearing with me. Oh, wait a minute. I've just realised I've only got my music on. Is my music on? Let's get the music on. Let's get the tunes on. See? See what happens? There we go. Hopefully we've got the tunes on now. It's party time. <laughs> I hope that's working. Right, um... Where were we? Where were we? I was sorting my tabs out. Here we go. Right, bear with me. Um, we're going to get the poll open. Weird thing happens when I go into my own channel here. Go to view the channel doesn't show me the poll results the first time until I go into it a second time and then it shows me it. 
pretty strange. Oh no, there it is, it's there now, weird. Or a third time then, take it. Right, there's one tab open, I need to open another couple because I've got a couple of other things I want to mention today. How's everybody doing by the way, everybody good? Yeah, right. How great is it watching somebody uh, typing stuff? Right, there's one of the things we need. Yes. And we also need this because what I want to also talk about today is a couple of channels I've been watching recently which are pretty awesome. One brand new one. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to let you know. Can I find it? Where is it? There it is. Nice. I wonder if anybody else has been watching these guys. Right, okay, let's get into the poll. I'm going to do... Wait a minute. Let's check the chat. You see how organised I am? I don't know if anybody remember last week I was talking about how uh, every second Thursday I'm teaching from home straight from work so I don't get as much time to set up the stream. That was last week. This week I've had all the time but I just <laughs> stopped working. There's the chat. Okay, we're up to date. <laughs> I think has everybody left? Sorry if you've left. Right, okay, we're getting into that now. Um, what do I do? Press buttons. I can't remember how to do anything. No. There we go. Right. We're into it. Right. No, that's pick guards. That's the wrong one. I've went into the wrong one. <laughs> when was that? Was that last week? There we go. We're in it. Right, okay. Let's take two. Right. 98 votes. Jeezy peeps. 100 would have been nice for the percentages to be perfect, but I'm no complaining at 98. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Now, this is not surprising. Can you see this? 50%, no trims. I'm disappointed. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. I can, I, I could see that. I could see that. I actually didn't use a trim for a long time as well, but started with a Floyd Rose. Anyway, um, stopped using them and then got into strategy trims. Right, um, so what we've got? 27% is the next highest on just a wee wiggle. A wee bit of subtle vibrato. That's probably where I am at. I'm in the 27%. Uh, just call me Joe Van Halen, Joe Vi Halen, sorry. Um, extreme, that's like Floydy type dive bombing use. 80% uh, is still a high uh, amount there. And the 5% B bender, something rare and crazy, other, which may well be alluded to in the comments. Let's see what everybody's saying. John Robson is saying a six screw Fender style trim for those Hank Marvin moments. Probably sell it, set up with a well lubed nut, new matron, and it'll give decent tuning stability. That said, a guitar without a trim is like a fry up without a hash brown. It's nice if it's there, but it's not essential. There you go. Wisdom from the man, John Robson. Live streams, Friday, beer o'clock, 5 pm, UK, just in case you didn't know. The Gain Dane, who's in, he's uh, said here as well his favourites are two point trims and the only ones I have set floating. The best ones I've tried are the Wilkinson trims in my Jet GS450 and the Harley Benton Fusion guitars. I use 1946 gauge strings and two springs in the back. Works pe perfect for that gauge. Oh, we're going on to more. Hold on a second here, read more. Vintage style trims I've decked to the body so it wiggles forward. Oh yeah, and he's talking about the six screw trim on Mick from TPS's show, how he does a video on how to set it up properly. Yes, mate, the Wilkinson trim on the Fusion particularly, which I believe is the WVS... Um, K... WVS 50K2. That's a good trim, really good trim that. You get it on the Harley Benton Fusions. Pretty great you get that stock. Robbie F. Uh, you don't even have the bar installed on my strat. Tried it, didn't like it, kept getting them away. Well, looks like you're in the 50%, mate. You're in good company. BPC's in. Budget pedal chap. I like strat trims, but almost always deck them so they fuck. This was interesting. Sorry, let me read this again. So, I like strat trims, but almost always deck them so they function as a hardtail. Wait for it. The adjustment on a strat trim for intonation and action is second to none, but I just don't often need to wiggle my notes as I do that with my hands. But yeah, the interesting thing there, yeah, he talks about uh, in more detail about how um, how much play there is in a strat trim. You can adjust the height, the length of the string. Um, yeah, pretty good system, trim. I never thought about it too much. Um, I'm in a, I'm Ed. Amin Ahmed, always get your name wrong, sorry mate. He always comments on uh, everything that I do as well, Amin, so you're hugely appreciated, thank you mate. Uh, Amin Ahmed, bend the stretch strings. Bend then stretch the strings, yeah. That's some, something I'm in the habit of doing where I change my strings all the time as well. Uh, Tostromofo6686, which I believe is 
Toby, is that right? I hope I've got that right. Uh, it's either none or my favourite, Floyd Rose, similar if the option exists, so you were in the 18%. Quite happy with a Bigsby on a Gretsch uh, or regular starts, two point trends. There's a little bit of everything. Um, with either the Goto 510 as expensive option or Wilkinson WVS 52K as the affordable one. I love both those two point trends, mate. Cal B's in, uh, Ben's and a wah pedal for me, thanks. Loving it, mate. Waka waka wah. Uh, Sean Hockey, just a wee wiggle here, brother. Same here, mate. Tom Green, surely not that Tom Green. Uh, well, he starts off by saying he's a weirdo, so it might be that Tom Green. This was one of the interesting ones, actually. So I'm a weirdo that has my strat straight up float. Eh. I'm a, a weirdo that has my strat set up floating because I prefer the sound but never use it as I don't really use the trim. So that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Like, just for the sort of noise of the springs and that. I like it. Um, I've heard of it being a tonal thing, but never heard of someone thinking as that of, as a priority. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, Animal John, 58. Absolute fave is none at all in the 50%. But if I were going to have a trim, it'd be the two-point Goto 510 is the choice. Such a smooth and responsive beastie. Same here, mate. That is my favourite too. I've got it on a few guitars now. Uh, Bum Crap Watch Co, who's in? Uh, the less bit to move on a guitar, the better. I hear you, mate. I'm, I'm a bit like that with the strings, actually. They get a bit in the way from you playing the guitar. Having to touch the strings and that's just a, an inconvenience. I could do without. Right, uh, Claire B. I dig the compromise on the pole. Yeah, it was Claire's suggestion to do it on tr trems, actually. And I think your original suggestion was non-strat trems, but you only get four options on the YouTube image poll, so I kind of had to compromise a bit, like you said. So Claire loves the Jazzmaster vibrato, though I do sometimes wish I can get an extra half step in both directions, not full dive bombs and squeals, just a little more range. Well, I'm yet to experience that. Mark Proctor, my favourite is a two-point trem flush to the body so that you can do a little wiggle at two-point floating trem. is nice and all, but can be a nightmare to keep the guitar in tune, etc. Yes, we're talking about the... Wait a minute. Uh, you have a Jackson V with a Floyd Rose, which I hate. It's in, it has incredible tuning stability, but the slightest touch of the bar, it's out of tune and doesn't come back to proper tuning. I know it, in the, it just needs setups correctly, but I can't get it right. Uh, edited you there, mate. Uh, yeah, I hear you, mate. Uh, Floyd's uh, amazing when they work, uh, nightmare when they don't. That's how I'd sum that one up. Mark Green Guitar, who's in? Floyd Roses are fun, but a pain in the behind to set up. Once they are done correctly, they are insane. Yep. Yeah. Just watch Satch and Vibe. Exactly, mate. Right, let's get out of here. Let's get back to here. Right, see if we can get the chat up. See if anybody's still here. See if there's been any technical issues like you haven't heard the last 10 minutes or something. Probably. Let's see. There it is. Right, let's go back a wee bit there. Uh, right, I can't remember where we came out there. Uh, I just spotted Mick Hale 72's in. Hello there, how you doing? Right, I'm not sure where, oh, I think we're, at, we're caught up here, right? So I went from all sorts of trems, Floyds to hardtail only, tunematic specifically, that's McHale 72. Uh, Cal B, low end guitars like mine don't hold tune the second you touch the bar, so just avoid them altogether. Well, yeah, I mean, setup takes a long time to set things up and get them dialed in, like a long time, what a trial and error. Uh, Scott Bogfoot, I will set up a trem to be hit and just take advantage of the locking system instead of buying a hardtail version of a guitar like Jackson Strats. Hmm. I'd love to try an Evertune. Yeah, I hear you. Um, starting to see them more. <laughs> Glenn Bale, as you said, that starting to see Evertunes on more guitars lately. Yes. Dave Lewis, I've got various trims on Strats, but prefer a Bigsby. See, now, I've only got experience with the Gretsch there, uh, Bigsby, and it's that particular one is not good. Again, maybe it's the setup, but I, um, I think I need quite a lot of setup to get that one doing anything useful. Uh, Tom Green is no, not that Tom Green. I am a weirdo though. <laughs> there you go, nice one. Uh, Alfie's in, how you doing mate? Subtle use for me, I forget about it half the time. Alfie, how did you get on? You were texting me today that you're getting new strings. Did you get your strings mate? Hope you're all sorted. Daniel Scott, I've got a few guitars and I've got most styles of tremolo, but to be honest, I never use them. Yeah, I, I like my trems. I do like to use the trem, but just the subtle use, just a wee bit of two point trem action, or like the Duesenberg, yeah. Nothing too crazy. Uh, the Jcaster, my Jet GS300, has better tuning stability when using the vibrato. If it's floating, when it's decked, it goes out of tune when using the vibrato, even just a little. Interesting. 
Yeah, I like a floating trim as well. That's how I like mine set up. Dave Lewis, the thing I like most about my jet is the sound that the engines make when they start. You're on the beer there. Speaking on the beer, like, okay. I didn't get properly started, but I, had, I did have some things I wanted to speak about today, other than the trims. Like, I feel like we've done trims, right? That was always the plan and the hope for the live stream thing, is that we could just kind of center the live stream around something, but it doesn't have to be, like, dedicated fully to that 100%. We can go off topic, off topic. We can go off topic a little bit. And speak about things like uh, Dave Lewis's jets, his jumbo jets, his Boeings. Ha! And whatnot. So yeah, um, my day job that I'm in most days at school. We're off for the Easter holidays. This was my last day today. I'm going to be off for 19 days. Now, I say I'm going to be off, but I'm still going to have gigs. I've got a wedding this Saturday. Um, I've got another one next weekend, I think, somewhere. Uh, still doing some teaching from home, uh, and then the, the YouTube thing is taking up a lot of time. So that's just kind of turning into a bit of a, is it a job? No, it's not a job, but it's it's getting there. It's getting close to, no, it's taking up a lot of time. And I've got so many videos to do, and so many projects to get through, and uh, yeah, I feel a bit disheartened at the moment, but I've got time. I need to just give myself a shake and get on with it. But uh, yeah, right, here's one of the things I wanted to talk about. I'm getting a bit, yes, this is where I'm going to go with this. With the videos, uh, I've been doing a lot of the Birmingham stuff, editing that, and it's kind of all samey. I've never done that kind of thing before, so I've got the interviews and that coming out. By the way, this Friday's video is the jet booth at uh, Birmingham Guitar Show. Um, so yeah, that's tomorrow. Excuse me. And I'm editing videos with interviews that we did BPC. It was last week. Nobody watched that. Watch that. <laughs> Watch it for BPC, Budget Pedal Chap, he's there. Um, who else did we get? Um, I'm doing the Lamb one, currently, a bit of that. Uh, I've got Johnny Budget Guitar Show, it's already on his channel, you can see it there. And we've done Rob Chapman, Oofed. and we've got Raphael Jesus as well. Jesus, one day, I'll get it. Yeah, so we've got these ones uh, coming up, but uh, doing a lot of editing of the same thing, I'm kind of getting a little bit uh, stale, right, and then Going back to thinking of the guitar review videos that I'm going to do, um, I just want to change things up a little bit, the format, because I'm, yeah, it's feeling like a chore. It's like, oh, I've got to do the specs and I've got to do this and that. And it's just like, uh, I want it to be fun. I want it to be more fun, so I'm going to get into that now. Speaking of fun, I want to talk about two channels that I've been watching. One very recently, as in just like yesterday or the day before, and another one that's been a wee while, right? So... I'm going to share the screen. Am I? No, I'm always going to share the wrong one. Right, this is from there. Right, here we go. Here's the first one. If you are not aware, actually, what one I'll start with? I'm going to start. I'm going to start with this one. Right, this guy. Anybody seen this yet? Straight out of the box. So this guy just started his channel like I think last week or something. First video. He's got a few shorts up, and he just put up his second video today. And this guy's just so full of energy. Um, refreshing, entertaining watch. It's not just, well, it says straight out of the box. So what he's doing is he's buying guitars from Amazon, like the budget ones, and he's trying them out. But so far, it's not what you expect, you know, especially like the kind of stuff that I do, which is like budget guitars. And then I complain about them. It's like, oh, it's not perfect. <laughs> you know what I mean? This guy is like so optimistic and fun. So uh, yeah. He's doing great. He's two videos. He's and actually this is way more than earlier on. He's got 789 subscribers already. Uh, that's with two videos in like two weeks. So I think this guy's going to blow up. He's going to do really well. Um, so I definitely check him out. Uh, recommend checking him out because uh, yeah, he's got some really good stuff on there. So I'm going to link him in this video. If you see this, mate, great job. Love the vids. You're do you're doing fantastic. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. Next one. I've been watching for. A while longer, not that long, maybe about three months, and it was uh, Raphael Juissus, sorry mate, that put me on to this guy, and this is next level stuff. Is anyone familiar with Super Danger Studios? OMG. This guy, this channel is just, oh, this is the, it's a game changer. It's a game changer, like the production quality of everything. 
Like these these videos that he does, they're, they're guitar reviews, right? But it's not like your guitar reviews, right? Uh, Amp Review was the most recent one as well. He's got like proper writing, proper filming. Uh, there'll be storyboards, scripting. It's just such an amazing product that he's putting out there. It's just so good and it's funny. Uh, and the guy's an amazing player. And there's always a song and he plays everything in the song. Um, good singer, uh, just great chill vibe guy. Uh, I don't agree with everything he says. So for example, we did one on the PRS Silver Sky and he absolutely loved it. And uh, I, I didn't like it, but that's all right. I still totally respect the guy. His stuff is so great. I'd highly recommend checking it out if you've not already seen him. So both these guys, Super Danger Studios that have been watching for a wee while and uh, Straight Out of the Box, this is refreshing stuff to watch and I feel inspired to sort of do more interesting things, but at the same time, I'm feeling a bit down about my own stuff. So that's good, that's a good thing. So we pep there, right. Sorry about that. Um, that was just that wee thing that I wanted to mention there. Uh, yeah, and Super Danger, I'll be linking him in as well. If you see this, mate, you're, you're the best. Love it, mate. Keep up the great work. Massive fan here. Right, okay, moving on. Let's get into the chat. See if anybody's seen any of this stuff. And let's do this. Right. Has anybody seen any of that there? Right, going back a wee bit. Here we go. Dave Lewis. Oh, right, that was your jet. Um, Peter Collins. Got, got more guitars with trems than without but don't really use Trem apart from the odd waggle. That's it, odd waggle's good. Cal B, nice break to recharge. Yes, mate, I'm, I'm very lucky, I'm very blessed to have uh, that amount of time off. I know that uh, I'm the envy of a lot of people getting that schedule, the school schedule. Glenn Bailey, I would like to have, I like to get a Gretsch with a Bigs bait. I don't have a guitar with a Bigs bait. I've played them and I like them. Oh, there you go, nice. I do, that type of Trem, I have to admit, I, I love the Duesenberg. I do prefer it. If you've never tried one, Glenn, check out Duesenberg. You can maybe even fit one on your existing guitar if it's got a... Why don't I just show you? Whoops. Yeah, if it's got this type of uh, stop bar. Oh, God, I can't do this. There we go. The stop bar that usually goes there, they just drop, drop in replacement. Um, and a little bit more responsive than a Bigs, Bigs Bay. A little bit more responsive. Um, and, yeah, non-intrusive. Like, no drilling holes or anything like that. Pretty cool. Okay, Carl B is saying, was that booth louder? What with the turbines going off? <laughs> Actually, they were loud. That's one of the things that's been hard with the editing of the videos, but there's an amazing AI software thing in my DaVinci Resolve editor that cuts out all the background noise and it's pretty cool. Um, oh, missed that there. Dave Lewis, Dunsey's Guitar World is an excellent channel. Agreed, mate. Dunsey's doing great stuff as well. I love his channel. It's just, he just does his own thing. Uh, nice and niche he's into a sort of cool music that's unique well, it's not unique but i mean it's uh it's less represented on youtube uh same as the guitars that he's in as well so yeah i lo love dunsey stuff fellow scott keep up the great work dunsey big fan hold on who else do you guys watch let me know um doo -doo 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 -doo. and vincent brennan agrees about uh dunsey yeah too right mate scott bogfoot would have to get a guitar with an Evertune as specced. I wouldn't want to modify a guitar to have one. Yeah, I uh, like what Phil McKnight did. Yeah, good shout. Uh, Glenn Bailey, I think it was Fricker, Glenn Fricker, who walked to the end of his driveway carrying the guitar by the strings and it was an Evertune that stayed in tune. Wow, that's impressive. Cal B, whoops. Um, I've subbed him. He used to be on early Scar My Guitar vids. Ah, that'll be the... Straight out of the box guy, that makes sense because I noticed uh, he mentioned them in his new video. I've not seen loads of the Scar My Guitar stuff, I've seen a couple of videos, it's good stuff. But uh, that makes sense, the connection there. Okay, um, Clive Smith. Hi Steve. Oh sorry mate, I've, uh, I can't remember your name. Oh, is it Sergey? Hello Sergey if you're here. Uh, I hope I've got you right, sorry mate. Clive Smith. Hi Steve, I've got a Gibson SG Standard 61 Sideways Vibrola. Vintage Cherry, very nice, but I don't use the whammy bar because it goes out of tune every time I use it, whether hard or soft. Well, yeah, I mean, on the Gibson style guitars, you've got that, basically that break angle on the G string. Um, it's, even without a trem, it's an issue, isn't it? Have you looked into a string butler? 
that could be an idea. They're kind of expensive for what they are, but if they if they fix that issue, then it could be a good shout. String Butler. Actually, uh, and if you want to go crazy, I think Gear View Mirror is in. Is that the right person? Who has got a shot on his channel uh, where he's made his own um, string butler just with two, what was it, two screws or something? Pretty interesting. Uh, uh, you need to have some bottle to do it, like some bravery. Um, Dave Lewis, Dunsey has a brilliant video coming in the next few days. Nice, keep an eye out for that. Uh, Scott Bogfoot saying, these videos where YouTubers show what they watch are awesome. 99% might not be for me, but some of my favourite channels have come to me from someone else's recommendations. Yeah, same here, mate. Um, yeah, but oh, these guys are like really great, worth checking out. Um, Glenn Bailey saying, hello. Gary Hill, not seen either of these guys, Steve, but we'll check them out. Yeah, definitely check them out. Um, Glenn Bailey, I'll look into that trem, it looks interesting. Yeah, mate, game changer. Um, I get them on eBay. Uh, you'll either get them under... Duesenberg or Goldo, I think either Goldo used to make Duesenberg, I think, and now they do their own, or the other way around, but it's the exact same thing if you're ever wondering. Um, and there's also, I think, another company on Amazon like, uh, is it Geica or Music Lily or something like that, do a version of it, but I've never tried one out, so I wouldn't be able to recommend it. I don't know if it's any good. Gary Hill, The Lamb every Monday night is a great watch and good banter. 100% mate, love The Lamb's channel, love the... Monday nights, uh, live streams, when I can make it. I've, I've had more rehearsals recently, but yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Love it. Um, oh, 22 WRC, Digitech Whammy, best Whammy ever. JK, you know what? Should I do it? Uh, I can't do it. It's way down in the bottom corner there. I've got a pretty cool pedal. I've got a Digitech Whammy, Whammy Wah XP200. Anybody familiar with that? That's a classic. Um, I wonder if that's worth anything. Anyway, uh, it is Sergey. Good, nice mate. From Belarus, there we go. Vincent Brennan bought a Gretsch 2420T Gold Dust. Nice, with Bigsby. Played about six times, cannot get on with it. Interesting. Is it the trim you can't get on with, mate, or just the whole the guitar as a whole? I never thought I would be into Gretsch at all, but I love that thing. The trim is not usable for me, but I really, really enjoy it. I'm still to do the video review on that. Like I say, I'm off for 19 days, so I'm going to try and get some of these videos done. But I want to do them in a cool style, like Super Danger and like straight out of the box. A bit more fun in the videos. Um, that Gretsch 2420, I always get... Uh, I'm not too clued up on the names. I know that that'll be the Streamliner series, but I can't think what body shape that one is. Um, Scott Bogfoot, it just occurred to me that I've never tried a finger slide along with a tremolo. Well, there you go. Straight after this, mate. Get on that. Uh, oh, great suggestion, Gary. Gary's asking if anyone spotted any great deals this week. Um, Gary mentioned that last week about sharing deals in the chat. So, yeah. If you've got any, chuck them in. Speaking of which, if anybody else is uh, waiting on the Harley Benton ST Modern, we're all waiting patiently, right? But I think it's coming very, very soon. Um, obviously, right, because it's got to be uh, before Q1, which is the 31st. But they've been teasing on their Instagram and Facebook. They've got some new products out. There's like a new um, wee carbon fibre travel acoustic with a speaker in it. Similar to like a Lava Me or something like that. Like a Harley Benton version of that. And there was something else. And I noticed they've got a load of short scale guitars out. And then yesterday they posted, um, what's your favourite headstock shape? And the headstock looks like it's the ST Modern. So I think they're just having a wee tease there. So hopefully it's any day now. Any day. Oh yeah, there was potentially going to be an unboxing tonight. But uh, it's not happened. I got it off eBay. It's the Ibanez. Oh no, I can't remember what it's called. A-Z-E-S. G something. Anyway, it arrived. Kind of. I got the eBay seller to deliver it to like a news agent close by. But I got an email this afternoon saying that uh, the news agent refused delivery of it. So that was great. So it's been uh, rescheduled for Tuesday, hopefully. But I'm uh, looking forward to checking that one out as well. Hey. Okay. Um, where are we there? Uh, anyone spotted any great deals this week? Dave Lewis asking, Steve, are you a fan of Stiff Little Fingers? That's a, that's a punk band, isn't it? Um, I'm not too familiar with their stuff. 
And for some reason, something sprang into mind about a story with them a long time ago, and I can't remember what it was. No. Some connection. Can't remember what it was. It may or may not come to me. Uh, slide and trim. I think that's against the law in 12 countries. <laughs> that might well be. Uh, Sergey is, I'm interested in Blade Runner Whammy Bar, but they even do not answer my email. Oh, I've never heard of Blade Runner Whammy Bars, but that's such a cool name for a, a trim system. Oh, there's something I've not spoke about. Right, I'll catch up with these last two comments and then I'll talk about that. Vincent Brennan, mostly the neck, but on the 2420. Oh, mostly the neck you don't like about that Gretsch, okay. But on the 2420, don't like the Bigsby, not, not really into trims, impulse buy. Oh, well. Is it returnable? Are you within the window? Uh, Jay Caster is saying, Andertons have good deals on the Black Star Valve Amps. Oh, nice. There you go, it could be worth checking out. Right, here was one of the things I wanted to mention. Right, so you might have noticed in the thumbnail, we need to address the elephant in the room. Tremolo versus vibrato. Right. Uh, I already know this, but for some reason I took notes on it and wrote it down so I can read it, but I don't know why. Right, so, tremolo, we all know, Leo Fender mislabeled it back in the day, and it's stuck. But it's, uh, yeah, there's quite a lot to it. There's a lot of uh, moving parts, not just to the tremolo, but to the story. So, yeah, tremolo, uh, for, in the classical sense, right, tremolo is like rapid bowing with your violin. Um, which on, when you get tremolo on an amp, it gives a sort of full version of that, the sort of volume dipping in and out. Because when the bow goes up, and then it has to come back again, there's a slight stop. So it's kind of like that. So this is going on. So it's rapid sort of quip uh, blowing. It's quivering or trembling, tremolo. And then there's also tremolando uh, in classical music, which is like a trill. Little ornament, wait a minute. I don't have the amp on, but you'll know a trill in the classical sense as being... Maybe. Um, so that's a minor second. And you can also get a trill of a second. But anything beyond the second is considered tremolando. I actually just found that out from my boss. Um, head of the music department in the school. I was talking to him about it today. Um, and yeah, that was what he said. I, I didn't know that, that it was more, anything more than a, a second is tremolando. Okay, so vibrato is very slight and subtle, quick fluctuations in pitch. Which is what your bar does, right? So, vibrato, not a tremolo. Now, funny thing, I can't remember who it was, but I remember watching a video recently because people know about this. I know you guys probably all know about this, but it was quite funny. Um, it was one of the big channels. I can't remember who it was. Uh, I don't want to say who it was or say a name just in case I get it wrong, but someone who's like up there, like between, I don't know, 60K to up to 200K subs or something like that. And they were reviewing an amp that had, uh, I had tremolo on the amp. Uh, <laughs> And they corrected it and they said, it's not tremolo though, is it? it's a vibrato. But they were being serious and uh, no, on the amp it is tremolo. It's, it's on the guitar, it's not tremolo. <laughs> so it's right on the amp, but it gets even more convoluted than that because is there not Fender amps called like the Vibro Champ and the Vibro Lux? So they've got like vibrato, but the amp's actually got tremolo on it. Oh my God, Pfft. funny. So, I remember speaking recently about I was going to do a video on uh, how sort of the inconsistencies with guitar players measuring stuff. So like how we've got a mix of imperial and metric. Um, so like I weigh guitars in pounds, which is so stupid, but that's what I do. Especially when I say, someone pointed this out to me in the comments the other day. I didn't even realize how stupid it was, but it's funny. So I'll say like a guitar wears six, a guitar weighs 6.6 .6 pounds which isn't six pounds, six ounces, it's 6.6 .6 pounds, it's just so stupid. Anyway, um, and then you've got um, kilograms and that, but then when it comes to fretboard radius, we talk about inches. When it comes to nut width, we talk about um, millimeters. Uh, <laughs> the string height, millimeters, scale length, as in uh, inches. 
So yeah, uh, I think I already mentioned scale length, didn't I? But you get the idea, we've got uh, lots of different sort of measurements going on that we'll all sort of just throw around. And then you put in that we can't tell the difference between vibrato and tremolo. So I think there's a funny video in there that uh, I'm going to get around to making at some point, hopefully. So yeah, just thought it was quite funny. Sorry, ranting away here. Excuse me. Right, Sergey's here as well. I like how guitar brands use S and T for naming the guitars as if nobody knows it's Stratocaster and Telecaster. Yeah, I find that funny as well. I also find it funny when um, a YouTuber who's, uh, I, th I think I'm guilty of doing it myself. It's just like, a, what do you call it? Tradition, almost. Not tradition, that's the wrong word. It'll come to me. Um, but yeah, a lot of uh, YouTubers and that, who they're, when they're reviewing guitars, they're scared to say it's a Strat. They'll say, oh, it's an S-type or it's a T-type. They'll also say the same, same thing. But I'm thinking, who are actually worried about getting them in trouble? Is Fender going to come and say, oh, you can't say that's a Strat and sue them? Or Is that even possible? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> there you go. I just thought it was pretty funny. Um, yeah, but that's a good point, mate. S and T types. But I've done it too, I think. Scott Bogfoot, do anyone make customs fancy uh, do anyone make custom fancy trem arms to fit various trems? Well, I'm gonna say probably. Someone might know. Anybody know in the chat? Let us know. I remember um my stepdad is a massive Queen and Brian May fan, and he has the Burns Brian May, and he bought uh there's an extended trem arm you can get for that, a longer one that's more like the Brian May one. That was an eBay seller, I think. Yeah, I'm sure I've seen longer and shorter trem arms for different trends. I suppose it depends on how popular the unit is that you're putting on. Al Lindsay Gear Safari. For your information, Steve, I'm going to the PJD. I'm going to PJD Guitars on the 10th of April to do some filming for the channel. Nice. If there's anything you want me to ask, let me know. I will have a think about that. Thank you, mate. Um, leave that with me. PJD Guitars. They've got some cool stuff. Excuse me. Uh, right, where are we at? Scott Bogfoot, any recommendations for the action to take? Hold on. Any recommendations for the action to take with a locking nut screw with strip threads? Oh, would you guys just tap and dye it for a larger screw? That's what I'm thinking. Okay, you need an expert on this, mate. This is not my area of expertise. Nothing is really, but that most definitely is not. Uh, oh, that sounds like a bummer. Though. There'll be a fix. What would uh, people not me mention, like painter's tape or something? Plumber's tape. Hmm. Dave Lewis, I bought my first Gretsch a few weeks ago. Absolutely love it, but my arthritis flared up and I haven't been able to play it much. Oh, mate, that's a shame. Sorry to hear that. Hope you're on the mend soon. Hope you're feeling better soon. Fighting fit for shredding. Um, Scott Bogfoot, better than using stone to weigh guitars. Lol, yeah, God. I've had a couple of guitars that weigh almost a stone. Um... <clears throat> Where are we at? Vincent is also sorry to hear that. Love the sound of Gretsch, but just have not bonded with it. That's fair enough. Uh, Dave Lewis, I've got three inches and can't bend it. All right, mate. <laughs> um, Glenn Bailey's possibly got a solution for Scott there. Can you get a new nut? You can get a new nut cheap, if not a bigger screw. Is all I can think of. Have you reached out to Corey, Corey the Frugal Fretter? Don't know him. Uh, chip number one, I'm having trouble finding Gear View Mirror channel on YouTube. Does anyone have a link? Um, if any mods could, put, only the mods could put in links if anybody can put something in. It's all one word if that helps. Uh, Gear View Mirror, and he might even be in the chat. Um, I hope it's Gear View Mirror. I'm, I'm, I always mix up Gear View Mirror with Hollywood Actress. Sorry, it's one of the two of them. I think it's Gear View Mirror, but it might also be Hollywood Actress. Please check out. I think he's Swedish. Are you Swedish, mate? Sorry if I've got that wrong. Sorry. Swiss? Swedish. Um, sorry, mate. It's maybe none. I'm just thinking it starts with S. Maybe he's Scottish. Um, oh, here we go. Um, Vincent Brennan. Possible Paul topic. Fretboard, inlays, preference, dots, etc. Great shout. Inlays. Thank you, mate. When I write it down, let's go to the righty-down cam. Seeing as I've never used this much tonight. One of the top things on my list for while I'm on holiday for 19 days is to get some running on the go. Jeez, this is uh, this is getting out of hand. Too much 
editing, desk time, munching bad stuff. Anyway, um, thanks for that, Vincent. That's a, a great idea. Inlays, yes. Might even do it next week. Um, Anthony Edwardson just fitted a stay trim bridge and arm to the Fender GM. The original was okay, but the tip was white and the rest of the plastics are cream. Oh, that's like a crime over in these parts, mate. I hope you're getting that fixed. Um, yeah, not fun. Tap it. Um, and oh, and the arm didn't fit as usual. Oh, nightmare. That's a bummer, mate. Dave Lewis, I've bought three Fenders since Christmas Day 2023. You bought the Joe Strummer Road One Telly and the Joe Strummer Camp. Sorry, mate, there's an emoji over that bottom comment. I can't see it until the next one comes in. But oh, there it is. Thank you. Joe Strummer Campfire and the 30th anniversary Scream of Delica Strat. Nice one, mate. Are you happy with them all? What's what you saying on all three of these? Uh, Sergey, I had a Cork G250, now I have a Jet uh, copy of a Fender Stratocaster body. You could just say S type, mate, for sure. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, I find the Cork G more comfortable because I can grab guitar by a longer top horn, but Stratocaster copy looking better for me. Yeah. I looked at some of those courts, you know what, see on paper the specs and that, they look pretty cool, but there's something about the aesthetic look that doesn't do it for me. It's kind of similar to the Yamaha Pacifica and the PRS Silver Scry. See, see the ones that are kind of trying very hard to be a strap, but just not quite there. Something about that just, I don't know what it is. It's on me, it's something I'm doing wrong in my brain, but there you go. Yeah, cools. Okay, okay. We've caught up with the chat. What else have we got? Um, Sergey's not a fan of offset body. Yeah, that's what kind of what I mean. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right. Uh, maybe you could tell you what's coming up on the channel. What is coming up on the channel? I'll tell you. Actually, maybe you get some feedback. No. Well, yeah, I would like feedback, but I've got all this Birmingham stuff. Uh, I'm thinking because of how low the views were on last week's video, um, which are the lowest that's been kind of ever. So it may be the thumbnail, title, content, it could be anything, but I think people are maybe just uh, bored of the Birmingham stuff, maybe. And I've got so much more to get out and I don't want to leave it too long and I can only do one a week, so I don't know whether I keep going, but I've got some other videos in the bank that I could mix in, but definitely this Friday is going to be the jet video. Um, oh, there's something else I can mention. It's about working with companies. Because we've got potentially a relationship with Jet now. We were hooked up at the show um, and we've talked about sending guitars. It's went a bit quiet just now, but that's fine because I'm busy anyway. But uh, yeah, doing things with companies in general because I got another, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Inquiry today. And uh, I'm just going to tell you what it is. I don't see any reason in not telling you. So have you heard of the Fesley brand? Not Fazley, but Fesley. Uh, Scar My Guitar, they've done a few in the Bald Shredder. I've seen they've done, done a lot of stuff with these guitars. So someone from Fesley got in touch asking if I wanted to review one of their DIY kits. Um, and my initial inclination is uh, no. It's not that I don't like them, or I mean, I might like the guitars, but a kick guitar is, for me to do a video on that, it's not like a lot of work. It's like built, assembling a guitar and filming it. And uh, what, did, if, what I do once to get the guitar if I don't like it? I probably won't like it if I've made it, and then it's my fault if it's not good. It's just a hard video to do, you know what I mean? So, Fesley, yeah, uh, it might happen. I don't think it's gonna happen, but that's my thoughts on it initially. Um, and then, also, you've probably seen loads of these videos, like maybe about three, four months ago, Timu, they got in touch, offering to pay for me to do a video on them and uh, advertise Timu. And no disrespect to any other channels who's done this, right? But there is a lot of channels that have done them and have seen them, and I'm just like, nah, nah. And I've used Timu, Timu before for buying stuff myself. This is not a Timu ad, by, ad right now, by the way. But I have used Timu before for buying stuff and I'm not a big fan. It's like, if you buy something once, or if, you, if you've if you ever used the app before, you go on it 
and it's like, right, okay, let's say that you're looking for a cheap guitar stand. I actually bought a cheap guitar stand off of Tina. It's not that great. But anyway, I was looking for a guitar stand, so I open it up and you go into it, and then it like spins a roulette wheel, and it's like, you've won a hundred pound vouchers. Right, okay, guitar stand. Right, use the voucher code and scratch cards. It's like, oh, and then something else pops on the screen. It's like, what is going on? I just want to look for a guitar stand. So yeah, I don't like it. It's like that sort of online gambling kind of thing. Like they're trying to, I'm not a fan. So yeah, no team move had happened here. And uh, yeah, so working with brands, I'm probably only interested in doing stuff that I'm interested in. So like when I started the channel, all about Fazley guitars and Jet guitars, I've been so lucky to hook up with Bax and Jet now, potentially. And that's the kind of stuff I want to do. And the Bolt guitars, I'm going to show you again. I'm going to show you this every week until I've done it. Still unfinished. I need to get paint on this body. Like I say, 19 days off. If I, if I don't get started on this, there's something wrong. So yeah, Bolt guitars, I want to refinish this body. So I wanted to do something with them. And I, I, I like the idea of the product they've got. So yeah. And just on the subject, this is stuff that's been on my mind. This feels really negative today. I'm so sorry, right? But it's been stuff that's on my mind, so I just wanted to talk about it. I'm being real. I'm being more real today. Thinking about other channels as well. So I'm a big fan. Probably top three, top five, top three. John Cordy. Love the guy's channel. And um, I also love Elmo Carolinen's channel. Both of them. And they're big sort of uh, um, ambassadors for buy the gear yourself, you know, um, otherwise your comp your opinion's compromised. And I, I believe that, it's true. And it's on my mind about if I do any videos with, for Jet Guitars going forward now, if it's like with Jet rather than not being Jet, uh, not being with Jet, where I just love them for what they are. So if something comes out I don't like, you know what I mean? Or I'll be less believable now if, uh, if I'm kind of doing stuff with them, uh, the credibility goes down, you know what I mean? So I'm conscious of this do you want do I want to work with companies at all you know because I value the integrity of these channels like Elmo like John Cordy I know John Cordy does do um he does do sponsor videos sometimes but yeah he's just he's phenomenal he's such a great player and I, I trust him um what he's saying I don't think he's ever selling me anything I never got that feeling same with Phil McKnight the, the New Year gear and probably uh, the top three again KDH I know he rubs a lot of people up the wrong way, but can't say the guy doesn't have integrity. And uh, yeah, I just like the way all, these are sort of like my favorite channels to watch. And I would hate to be not like that. There you go, that's the best way I can say it. There's a, there's a lot of other channels out there, the big channels, um, that they do all the deals, you know? And I can see now that it, it's very, it could go there. You know, you can get in touch with these companies and you can start doing that, but I don't know if I like it. Sorry, I'm so ranty today. Apologies. Right, I'm going to catch up with some comments and uh, I promise next time I'm going to be happy. I'm in a bit of a huff today. Sorry. Could you believe it? I'm going to be off work for 19 days and I'm miserable. What's going on? <laughs> Help! Help! What a complaining guy. Sorry. Right. Um, Dave Lewis. Yes, I love all three. You like all your, your fenders. Great, mate. I'm glad you like them. Uh, Gary Hill, Steve, the Jet do a good telly. Yes, they do, mate. They do. Well, the one I had, the, the, I think it's the cheapest guitar they do, is the Jet JT300. See, this is what I'm talking about. Now, do you believe me now, right? After Friday's video that goes up, right, you're going to see that I'm very much into Jet and I'm, uh, yeah, I don't know if it looks worse now. But yeah, the Jet JT300, Gary, it's a brilliant guitar. It's like 160 quid or something. The only complaint is it's top loading right, which is fine if you don't mind that, um, I prefer string through, and I don't even know why, maybe it's not even a bad thing, but uh, yeah, that's the only thing, uh, the, ne the next tally up from that is the JT350, which is almost double the price, also looks good, um, I think it has rosewood fretboards, hmm, sorry, but yeah, they do they do, do a good uh, tally, Gary, worth checking out, I mean, for the price, it's a beast, I had one on the channel, I've done a review on it, mate, you can check it out, um, Scott Bogfoot, speaking of inlays, Thalia, Thalia make capos using the same combination of metals, woods and inlays that Gibson have. They get their woods and inlays right from Gibson. Interesting. Check it out. 
Uh, Vincent Brennan, you've seen them. Um, Dave Lewis, Steve, what amps and pedals do you use? My live rig, mate, is um, the Line 6 HX Stomp XL. In ears, um, portable rig, love it. In the room, uh, I use an Fender Mustang 3. Uh, absolutely love that amp. They stopped the product support for it, so you can't get updates or uh, get any of the things on the software anymore. It's annoying, but still sounds great. Absolutely love that amp. It gets a lot of hate, but I love it. And I'm actually looking for a Fender GTX, also discontinued, uh, 50. Like what Alfie's got, if he's in the chat. Um, so I could do some live looping on the channel. That's the plan. Um, pedals, mate. I'll show you my pedal. Other than the Line 6, this is my only pedal. And I don't even use it. I do use it, actually. On my music stand, if I've got like a thick, stiff book and I can't keep the pages open, I'll put that down to keep the page open. That's it, mate. Not a pedal guy. I wish I was, but I'm not. It would be great for the channel if it was a pedal guy. You can get like a 20 quid pedal every other week and uh, review it. But, uh, not into them. You know, can I, here we go. Oh, it's half past. I could totally have gotten a rant about pedals. I'll save that rant for another day, right? But, uh, okay. <laughs> right, Daniel Scott, I've done kick guitars, but I chuck all the hardware in the bin, buy my own from AliExpress and eBay. That's probably what I would do as well, mate. Paul McKean. Hello, mate. I've gone off kick guitars as you can buy a Jet Strat or Tele cheaper than the kits are. You can have fun modding a Jet say. Yes, mate, that's what I would prefer to do as well. Vincent Brennan would not touch Timu data collection. Ah, see, I wasn't even aware of that, but yeah, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Anthony Edwardson, John Crordy equals prolific. Yes, mate, sometimes more than two videos a day. In fact, speaking of pro prolific, Rich Novice Noisemaker, he put up five videos today. <laughs> he might even have put up more since then, but... There's a prolific man for you as well. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm just going to catch up with the chat and then I'll let you all go and I'm so sorry for being such a moan today. Um, also thought that Fesley were US only. Uh, I don't know. Um, possibly. They've got in touch, so I don't know. Uh, also, no, I'm not going to get into that rant. Uh, Mark Green, Elmo sure knows how to abuse a trem. Yes, he does. Uh, I did a bit of Elmo on, on Friday's video with the Jet Guitars. Sister Rose, hello there, how are you doing? I'm pretty interested in the subject. It's hard for me to pick one. In some ways, a decent Strat trem is the best balance. I like the feel of an offset trem. I've never had a Floyd Rose or similar. There you go, nice, thanks for sharing. Dave Elmo's Timu are great for t-shirts under three pound each and tin guitar signs. You can get the guitar shirt, Trogli and three chord Dave have for a fiver. <laughs> nice. Uh, Sister Rose, I like the concept behind those new Jazzmaster trems with the extended range but apparently they have a bunch of issues. I'll need to look into that, I'm not sure what that is. Thank you for sharing. Ian Mason, I have uninstalled Timu, sick of constant messages. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Um, oh, the panorama trend. Thanks for that, Sister Rose, I will check that out. Um, Dave Lewis, I like KDH and his best mate. Yeah, Glenn. Glenn and uh, KDH videos are really fun, I enjoy them. Uh, Tom Green, I enjoy the, the Guitaristas channel for the same reasons. Just seems to keep it real with no sponsor content, yeah. Uh, I love, um, oh, Colin, his channel's fantastic as well, really great. That's so chill, isn't it? It's just perfect for, I hope he doesn't take this the wrong way, but like uh, sitting down for a long time, it's the kind of thing I would put on in the background, you know, and I kind of opt in and out when I'm watching it. And most of the time I end up watching the whole thing, but it's, uh, yeah, it's great, love it. Uh, Vincent Brennan, have a half and a bit of, sh have a half and a bit of shortbread and chilli. All right, mate. Uh, Sister Rose, Steve, Jet Set Cassidy, I know, it's bad, is it? Cheers, says Gary, uh, John Channing, why are you in the huff? I know, mate, I'm sorry. I don't know, I need to give myself a shake. I'm terrible. Uh, oh, Lindsay, Gear Safari, quick question. Uh, actually, I shouldn't feel so bad about going late because I started late, didn't I? Right, we'll carry on. Feel free to leave if you've had enough. I don't blame you. Uh, Money guy, money, moan, moan. Quick question, Steve, would you upgrade the locking tuners on a Jet JS450? Uh, I have some unused Geiker locking tuners here. Uh, I liked the locking tuners on the Jet JS450. I just wish they were staggered, but uh, no, I thought they were fine. Um, I've had Geiker locking tuners um, quite a few years ago, so they may be better now, and I think they sell different grades, like they've got a different series. I had the lower series ones and they weren't as good, so maybe the ones you've got are better. Um, there we go. Whoops. Hold on. Where am I? Where am I? Lost myself there. Okay. 
Uh, Sergey, do jet use lacquer or oil at the next? I can literally remove it by alcohol. I don't know. Excuse me. I'll need to find out. Pete77. Hey, Steve. Are you, are you into Les Paul style guitars? Pardon me, Pete. Yes. Well, I mean, no. I don't like them in general. I don't play them. I've never got on with them. But I want to change that. I do like the idea of... Uh, I like the idea of liking one. I really want to like one. So I'm... I'm always kind of got in my back of my mind that I'm looking for one, but I've not found one that I like yet. Um, one day. Uh, Sister Rose, Fender make great modelers. I have the Rumble LT25 used for both bass and guitar. Yeah, they're great. I love the Fender modeling stuff. Uh, I don't love Fender, but I do love them. I mean, I, I do love Fender, like a lot of their guitars that I've got in that, but as a company... Uh, <laughs> Calby, first world problems, eh? Yes, 100%, mate. One step at a time to... Climb the hill. Focus on one thing at a time. Have a nice break. Remember, YouTube is a fun. You are totally right, Cal, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, Ogma, DJ Musician. Hello, mate. I might have missed you earlier in the chat. Thanks for coming. You've got a £1,000 super chat waiting for you if you play Eruption on that guitar behind you on my right shoulder. Ah. See. That's... You must have noticed it doesn't have any strings on it, did you? That's how I'm not getting my thousand pound. Nah, I'm all joking. No, I couldn't do that, mate, but uh, thank you for the offer. Um, I couldn't even play that if I practiced it. Steve, check out the video. This is from Scott. Uh, Gibson by Talia, a fully licensed cab. I will, mate. I'll do that. Um, Gary Helsing, yeah, he was in Guitar Guitar. I might have missed what that was about, sorry. Thanks for another good stream. Thank you very much, Glenn. Um, chimp number one, integrity is everything. This is what keeps you credible to the viewers. Hope this helps. Yes, it does, mate. This is exactly what I'm thinking. Um... Gary Hill, Steve, remember to tag the two guys you mentioned earlier. I most certainly will, Gary. Thanks for that. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Scott. Oops, they're still coming. Rob F, you just got back from your meeting. Ran 30 minutes longer than scheduled, so I've missed most of the live stream. Don't you worry, mate. I, there was a lot of complaining going on. So uh, if you want to save yourself a headache, maybe don't watch the, the catch-up. If you're watching on catch-up, by the way, wow. If you made it this far watching on catch-up, thank you. Thank you for watching, and I'm sorry that you endured this. Uh, I like the Budget Guitar Show, oh, 100%, I love the Budget Guitar Show, Johnny's my man, yeah. Uh, Johnny will always tell it like it is as well, you can't uh, not appreciate that. Uh, the Game Dane, have you made a video of your Mustang 3? I've not, mate, um, would be fun with a review of an older amp like that, yeah. I mean, uh, Game Dane, I've got so much to get through, but when it, there will come a time when I'm struggling for ideas. I can't see it happening, happening anytime soon, but when it does, that amp will always be there, yeah. Um, oh, I actually picked up a Line 6. Spider 3, uh, on two, two by 10 the other day. Got it for school, but uh, yeah, I might do a video on that as well before it goes back to school. Sister Rose, yeah, for background content, I use like YouTube deep dive rabbit hole stuff, wrestling and D&D &D actual plays, sometimes just random guitar synth playlists. Yeah, very cool. Um, Scott Bogfoot, is there a solid body Starcaster? Yes and no. There isn't a solid body Starcaster like um, this shape of guitar if that's what you mean, but Fender, so this looks like, a, this is a, a decal. They do the active series that doesn't have F-holes, but it's still chambered, so it's still semi-hollow. Um, but Fender also used the word Starcaster on budget, like Squire catalog guitars, so you can find like a, a Strat called a Starcaster, but it's a Strat. Um, so they would be solid body, if that's what you mean. Sister Rose, yeah, I feel the same, Steve. I like the idea of liking Les Paul. I listen to a lot of Stoner Doom that uses them. I do like the aesthetics of a good LP, especially in a fun colour. Yes. Uh, Dave Lewis, be careful with backs, Fazley. They won't pay you for your videos. Just send you stuff you have to send back by a set time. Or they charge you three bad reviews and you're off. Well, I mean, that's what I've had to do. That's exactly what happened. Uh, well, they sent me three guitars. I did have to give two of them unfavourable reviews because they were, they were bad. Uh, and the, the third one was really good, so that got a good review. And yeah, I sent them back within 60 days, which is kind of good, to be honest, because I can't hoard guitars, you know, run out of space here. So that worked well. Um, Rob's going to rewatch the live stream shortly. Thank you, Rob, and good luck to you, mate. Um, just check out at any time. I don't blame you, mate. Uh, Ogma, ranting is good for the soul. Thank you, mate. I do feel a bit better. I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, my partner, Yoshi, she's actually away to China on a business trip just now. So uh, I'm on my own. So uh, yeah, I can't rant. She usually is the brunt of my ranting. So <laughs> thank you guys for being here. Um, Gary Hill, 
idea would be your journey so far as a YouTuber, highs, lows, etc. Yeah, well, I've done my 2023 video, like the year in review, but yeah. Thank you, Gary, good suggestion. Uh, Sister Rose, right, we're going to call today just after this one. Starcasters are so cool, but I can't get comfy with big semi hollows. Wanted one ever since I watched Johnny Greenwood play an amazing cover of Electric Counterpoint. Um, Sister Rose, have you tried the Starcaster? I know you're saying you can't get comfy with big semi hollows, but because of the offset contours of this, it's not as big. It is as big, right? I mean, it's a slightly, sorry, trying to get a bit further back. It's a slightly smaller body than a, a 335, but because of the angle, it sits lower down on your lap. So if you get a chance to try one, it might be more comfortable than you expect. Not super comfy like a Strat or anything, but not as cumbersome as a 335, which is going to sit taller on your lap. Right, okay, thank you all so much. Apologies again for the rant, apologies it was late. Um, next week, I'm going to try and play some guitar on the live stream with some backing tracks. I want to use the Mick Rockland Dreamstream ones that I bought a while ago. So yeah, looking forward to that. And just a couple of wee comments before we go. Uh, Jay Caster for some nice long form guitar related stuff. I watch amp repairs and the like. Uncle Doug, Guitologist and Sonic, Psionic Audio have plenty of good stuff. Right, okay. Thanks all. Good night or good day, whatever it is to you. I'm going to do that thing where I try and do my sign off and it always fails, but here we go. Right, thanks you all very much. What do we say again? What is the sign off? Uh, have you got this far? Yeah, thanks for watching. Until next time. See you later. Did it work that time? I don't know if it worked.